Hi, I'm Carrie Hanks of the Spanish Fork St. Lameria Chamber of Commerce, and welcome to SAC Lunch Lectures. And now we are going to welcome Travis Larson from Heidemann, McKay, Ugely, and Olson Law Firm, and he's got a message for us today. Welcome, Travis. Thanks, Carrie. Like, like Carrie said, my name is Travis Larson. I'm an attorney at the law firm of Heidemann McKay, hugely and Olson here in town on the corner of 4th North and Main Street. And I appreciate the opportunity to address some remarks, especially because inviting a, a lawyer to a luncheon is sort of like inviting five interesting people to leave. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad for your patience and your time. I enjoy being a lawyer very much. I thought about uh, engaging in some different career opportunities. Maybe I should have gone to Mountain Land, um, took some engineering classes, and didn't do very well, so they put me in a more remedial kind of engineering course, but I, I, didn't, I didn't succeed at that either. I couldn't seem to get the, the Legos to fit together, and uh, so that didn't work out. I took an astronomy class, and they have you go outside and try to track the movements of planets, but I, I could never seem to find Jupiter in my microscope. It just wasn't, just wasn't something I could do. So, so I'm an attorney. And part of what I do as an attorney is help to resolve conflict. We all deal with conflict every day, conflict that we have with other people. Most of those conflicts are rather inconsequential, and any harm that we receive as a result of those conflicts, we just sort of absorb and we walk away. And uh, things like you get cut off in traffic, you've got conflict with another driver. You don't make a big deal about it. Uh, you fight with your kids about cleaning up their room. Somebody says something about you that you don't like. Those types of conflict are conflicts that we just deal with, and you don't usually go talk to an attorney about those kinds of things. There are other conflicts that are more substantive. Conflicts like somebody writes you a check that bounces, or you get double charged for airfare that you purchased. You're involved in a minor car accident, a fender bend or something like that. Those conflicts start to hurt your pocketbook a little bit more. Uh, then we've got conflicts that even escalate beyond that and some of the harm that results from conflicts of a more serious nature can sometimes be life changing. Uh, if you suffer some kind of life altering injury as a result of someone else's negligence, uh, I've, had, I've had clients that have been the victims of million dollar securities fraud. I've had clients that uh, had their house bulldozed by an oil company without authorization. Those are, those are serious kinds of conflict. And those types of conflict are hard to resolve sometimes. And we have a legal system in place that helps people to resolve conflict that they can't resolve on their own. And what I want to talk about today is the accessibility of that legal system. Uh, maybe I can ask for some help from the group here. What are some common negative perceptions about the legal system? I'm hoping you're going to give me the answer I'm looking for. The one that I hear the most is that our court system, not the attorneys, but our court system needs to be fixed. And why does it need to be fixed? Because so many people feel that justice really isn't done in the courtroom. Okay. It's not fair? Unfair. Not fair. Okay, anything else? It's, it's, it's too expensive. You, you can't afford it. Anything else? Is it fast? It's very slow. That, that's what attorneys call a, a leading question. It's slow. Um, it's slow. It's inaccessible. And sometimes it doesn't work the way we want it to work. And so I want to address a few practical ideas that are not perfect solutions, but that can address the perceptions that the legal system is too slow, too expensive, too cumbersome for regular people like you and me. First of all, I want to address the idea of unbundled legal services. If you think about a legal case as a bundle of sticks, and each one of those particular sticks is a component of handling a legal case, the idea of unbundling those legal services is that you can engage a lawyer, legal representation, to handle 
some of those sticks, some of the more complicated or, or technical aspects of a case without having to pay an attorney to monitor case deadlines and manage your case, some things that a client could, could reasonably with effort do on their own. That uh, arrangement I have used in the past very successfully. It's been very rewarding. And the obvious benefit to that is a cost saving to clients that might otherwise feel like they're prohibited from accessing the legal system. One other approach that we use a lot is the idea of, of some creative fee arrangements. The typical model is that you pay an attorney an hourly rate for legal services, but that's not the way that we have to charge legal fees. We can charge a flat rate fee, which takes some of the unpredictability out of paying for legal services. We, some cases are appropriate for a contingency fee type arrangement where the attorney gets paid on the back end from the proceeds of a case. And we can mix and match those kinds of things, have a reduced hourly or a flat fee component mixed with a contingency. Uh, basically, if we can get creative about structuring a fee that works better for a client, we can save some costs that way and, and better meet a client's needs. The third thing I want to address is small claims courts. Small claims courts are fast, they're efficient. Uh, they're designed to handle controversies of up to $10,000. And because they're fast and efficient, uh, I can handle a small claims case for a fraction of what I would have to charge in a normal district court case. It's really fast. You file one document, you show up at a hearing, and you have the trial, and that's it. Those can be really good arrangements. Small claims courts can be a little unpredictable, but uh, a viable option nonetheless. Fourth, for the truly economically disadvantaged, their legal aid and pro bono services that are available. They're out there, there's a lot of them, if you can qualify. The primary qualification being level of income, and if your level of income is sufficiently depressed, then those can be good resources, and I will frequently refer those type of resources to clients that don't have anywhere else to turn. Uh, the fifth topic that I wanted to address is some proposed rules changes. The advisory committee to the, the Utah State Supreme Court is currently looking at some proposed changes to court rules that will make courts more accessible to uh, regular people. Uh, typically we have, or what we have now, our litigation model currently is sort of a one size fits all model where we're trying to get from point A to point B to, to prove whatever we're trying to prove in court. And the model now requires us all to drive like an Aston Martin or a Bentley to get from point A to point B when a lot of cases we can get from point A to point B with a Toyota or a Ford and we don't need to pay expensive experts and we don't need to do extensive discovery and send out extensive subpoenas. For some cases that's what's necessary but for a lot of cases that's not necessary and the proposed rules that I hope will be implemented in relatively short order will reduce the cost and speed up the process of litigation in a lot of cases. I'm not suggesting that anything I've proposed today is a perfect solution to the slowness and the cost of litigation and accessing the legal system, but I am suggesting that there are some good solutions out there and that if attorneys and clients can come together and think creatively about how best to, to meet a client's needs that we can access some of those good solutions. Does anybody have any questions? Yes? If you win something in small claims court and a judgment is issued, I've talked to a lot of people who <coughs> said they still never got paid. It was a waste of time and money because they never paid. Yeah, getting a judgment oftentimes is half the battle. You've got to collect on the judgment too. So you've really got to be engaged in the process from, from beginning to end and uh, you know, as the saying goes, you're not going to squeeze blood out of a turnip. And so that's part of what a good attorney should do is talk to you about that at the outset of a case and talk about not only are you going to win, but what's the likelihood that you're going to be able to collect. That's just part of being a good attorney is addressing that. And wouldn't that be more, more of a reason to, to look into getting an attorney for small claims court because your ability to collect would, would be enhanced or increased? Uh, yeah, the collection part of it is is 
a concern that we can address a little more effectively in a small claims court if, if the controversy is $10,000 or less, just because we can get a result so fast and uh, we get information back so fast that, that uh, the judgment doesn't go stale, we don't have large lapses of time, and we can really stay on top of things a lot better. I read yesterday, and you, you I'm sure would be able to clarify this, that if somebody hires an attorney, they're more likely to receive three times a greater settlement than if they try to handle it without an attorney. Is that not national average, or is that? I don't know the specific number, but that sounds right to me. Is that right? Just especially when you're dealing with, if you've got an insurance company that's that's a defendant that you're dealing with, then an insurance company kind of knows the rules of the game. Attorneys know the rules of those games just as well. And if, if you've got that type of a claim where you've got an insurance company that's potentially liable for some harm you've received, then uh, really it would be advisable to get legal counsel for that. And if you've got questions about any of those proposals, I've just briefly touched on a few ideas. Feel free to, to call us. My number is 801-812-1000. And again, we're just on the corner of 4th, North, and Main. I'm happy to talk about any of those ideas in depth with anybody that would like some more information about it. Oh, go ahead, Bryce. This is a general question for the general audience. What would you say is one of the most common things that people don't take advantage of an attorney for? Something they should, some legal counsel they should get, but they're not doing it. And you think, boy, if I could tell people just to come in and talk to us about this area, is there something like that that most people are just not thinking they, they should actually get legal help with? Um, business formation a lot. People uh, try to set up their businesses on their own, and sometimes they do a good job, and sometimes they don't. And that's an area that we can help out with uh, quite a bit on the front end. That, that's just one of those areas that people kind of feel like they can do on their own, because some people are very good at doing that on their own. It doesn't require an attorney to set up a business, but that's one area that, that you might want to consider that. But generally speaking, uh, sometimes people are reluctant to go talk to an attorney or engage a legal process because they feel bad about it. I had someone call me a couple days ago who her, her business partner took $15,000 from her and she said, well, I don't want to sue her. That would make me feel bad. But uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know that her family wants to go without $15,000 either. And uh, that process, the legal process is there for the purpose of resolving those kinds of disputes that we can't get resolved on our own. So. Uh, sometimes people just sit on claims. They just, they just are, are hesitant about doing anything so they don't do anything at all. And uh, most attorneys will give you a free initial consultation, take advantage of that, get, a, get an idea of what your legal situation is, and then you can make some informed decisions. Thank you, Travis. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. That's, that was great information. Uh, I know that a lot of us are hesitant to call a law firm for legal services, but as uh, Travis is, has let us know, it can be relatively painless. So if you are needing legal services, please contact their office there at Heidelman, McKay, Ugely, and Olson.